you know, we can, we can find out about God, you know, making the choice to go right in the confines of the church or being around certain people or sometimes leaving those people too, you can find a deeper sense of God. And so for me, in my experience, I've had a bit of both, right? Both experiences are just as valid. Welcome back to the Balance Bowley podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm Nikita Thigpen, your host and balance and relationship advisor, partnering with you to change the narrative so we can amplify intimacy within and across your relationships and you can have the freedom, flexibility, and confidence to thrive in work life and in love. Well, are you ready? We are at the top, the very top of season 20. You know, for those of you who are new to Balance Boldly for Ambitious Women in Business and a Few Brave Men, I say that five times fast, right? It is all about moving from that space of survival into a place where you can thrive. And we break down everything because it's a lot of information into seasons. This season, season 20, is all about those bold decisions we make that reap us the biggest rewards. That I'm talking personally, professionally, financially, in your love life, in your bedroom, all of the above, because we grown folks over here and this is what matters most. What can you do? What do you have control over? What decision can you make and put it into action, not just from your mind, but actually put it into action so you can create the biggest reward for your life, for your balance, and for your joy? Well... I was very strategic when I decided, well, who would kick off season 20 with me? (laughs) My good friend, amazing sister, lovely, lovely human, first and foremost, completely creative and just happens to be a little bit on the dope side. Parshel Tashi is the perfect person for us to kick this off with. Are you ready? Parshel Tashi is a former high school teacher. I know it's a special place in heaven for her because she actually liked the teenagers. Ciao. She is now an entrepreneur and video producer for the past 10 plus years. I feel like we're going on at least four plus years of knowing each other. We kind of connected and didn't let go even though we had some specialness in the middle of that, because you know, that's what women do. But then we really, really connected and we didn't let go. <laughs> Parshell's production company, Fresh Level, was built up in multiple locations or operations, producing videos nationally and internationally for organizations like SeaWorld, Bush Gardens, The Wharton School, and Spectrum. It wasn't until she ended her 28-year long, devoted relationship with the church that Parshel began to discover who she really is. This experience has completely transformed her life and the way she serves others today. A true servant leader, there is no question in my heart or my mind. Whether consulting, producing, or teaching, Parshel is all about creating a lasting impact in the world, one video at a time. Parshel Tashi, welcome to the Balance Boldly Podcast. How are you today? I am great, thanks Nikita. (laughs) <laughs> you're welcome you, you like how i was like and we special too we special for <laughs> yeah you're a little, a, little, a little hot sauce you put on there <laughs> always i would love for you to just share with everyone a little bit about what you're doing in the world today because i know you've made quite a few pivots and just really dove into the excellence of yourself and of your craft yeah what i'm doing right now i when i left teaching high school which you talked about in the beginning when I left teaching to jump into video, I knew that I was leaving the kids in a sense. And uh, a lot of people assumed that I didn't, you know, I couldn't handle the kids. But it's funny how life happens because I said on that day that I left and I remember it, I said, well, I'm going to find a way to be around uh, teenagers on my own terms. Mm. And um, and so now uh, fast forward, uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. And it's just, it's incredible. So Uh, A little bit about what I'm doing. I'm using what I've learned through video production on a professional level and bringing that experience and that know-how to caring, committed, and creative teenagers. Um, And it's my intention to show them how they can make an impact and really make a difference in their own life and in the lives of other people by making videos. It's a very educational activity and it really boosts a lot of confidence. Um, it boosts, you know, certain aspects of creativity, um, as well as communication. And so I'm excited just how multifaceted this activity uh, is and what it can bring to the students that I'm working with. And so that's what I'm doing now. And it's it's really, really been exciting just to see 
how things have unfolded. Our first class is in session right now. So by the time this is released, we'll, we'll be on our third or fourth group. But, um, you know, we have kids from all over who are part of this. And so it's been really exciting. And like I said, full circle. I love that. So you have some young people and God bless your heart for that. Cause you know, I, I love them. I love them. I just don't always like them. You know, I say that, I say that about them, my own kids. We know that. Right. Um, but I know a lot of them are really interested one, cause they just want to break up the monotony of all the, you know, traditional schoolwork that they're doing, uh, especially now, you know, pre and post COVID, you know, differences. And by the time this is released, depending on where we are in the world right now, they're really overwhelmed, but a lot of them, I know from personal conversations with you, want to be like YouTube stars, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. I think that, of course, they see that appeal and they see this is what other kids are doing. And I think that that's great. And that that is a path to that um, yeah. if, if they choose. Um, and so part of this as well is just to allow them to understand that that sort of stardom and influence comes as you make a difference for other people. So, um, so it's really just kind of like bringing it uh, back from that perspective, allowing them to, to grow and to see that as a possibility um, for themselves. Yeah, I mean, tying and influencership, is that a word? I think I just made that up. Um, <laughs> with servant leadership. Like, I, I love that you're doing it because what it is, is it's allowing them to make a decision about what they want to do. Okay, you said you're interested in being a YouTube star or, you know, you want to create better YouTubes for your next project that you have coming up, your, your senior thesis, you know, whatever it is that you have going on you made that decision and now they're investing in themselves or their parents are also investing. And I know it's very nominal investment mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. just get, you know, those first groups in and really let them have that experience. So you're limiting the barrier for a lot of the, the, the families that have just really gone through a lot to allow them to participate in this experience without it being cost prohibitive, which is a huge thing. And then they get rewards on the other side of that. And I bring that up specifically because I know that there's a lot of challenges for people around investing in themselves or their kids, even when money is not the issue. And a lot of it is because we get in our head about what we can and we can't do and what we shouldn't do or why it's not important. And we just hold ourselves back to th these limiting beliefs, both in the business and leadership world but also personally. And I know that you can definitely speak to that, you know, personally, just being like, well, I was holding myself to other people's and other things, you know, the expectations of what rules I wasn't supposed to break. And you, so you couldn't reap the reward that would be the most fulfilling for you in that. So I would love for you to share with, I'm trying not to give it all away, to share a little bit about your story and, and how you felt like you had to break free from some of those limiting beliefs and expectations that really just weren't in, in tune with who you are. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up in the church and I think a lot of, a lot of people can relate to that statement. Yeah. And, um, uh, but with that, that's where I gained a lot of my initial beliefs and, you know, things that were taught to me. And I, I guess the type of person that I am, I took those beliefs and I really made my life around them. Yeah. And so, you know, everything from, uh, what's the right thing to do, you know, don't have sex before you're married, um, you know, be about the work of, you know, evangelizing and bringing people to, to God and mm -hmm. things of the nature. Like I took those, those uh, aspects very seriously um, at a young age, probably as early as 16 or 17, when I started to just make certain decisions about my, about what I wanted to do with these beliefs that I had, um, you know, about, about God, about church and tradition. And uh, it wasn't until I think when I went to Philadelphia and that was the first time I lived away from, you know, I guess all of my family to that extent um, outside of college. And so now as an adult, you know, out of college, this is where, this is where I was. And I'm in Philadelphia in a big new city. And I felt this pressure to join a church. And that was again, out of tradition. And I thought to myself, well, I've been a part of a number of churches by this point, And I'm not sure if I really, really want to do that, but I was aware of this pressure that I felt that didn't really seem to, it just didn't resonate with me. And so that's what kind of sparked um, just sort of me diving into those inner questions that I had about God and wanting to um, have, you know, an experience and to know, and to know that experience. And, and essentially it's, it's a matter of taking the things that I was taught, kind of sticking them up against my experience and whatever sticks, sticks, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like now, instead of having a belief about things, there's more things that I actually truly know for myself. And so um, 
a lot of that came with a big, huge decision to, to say, you know what, I'm not going to go to church anymore. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm not going to, um, I'm just going to make a change and to seek God um, and this truth that I feel within myself through my, my inner questioning and, and through my own experience, right? To understand really from that perspective who God is and in essence, who I am. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And the reality is for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Christian faith, because you know we have a diverse population as well, the, the real truest teaching of the Bible and every sect of Christianity is a little bit different, just like every sect of Jewish faith or Muslim faith is a little bit different, like different types of Muslims, there's different types of Christians. The whole is supposed to be that the church is not the building. And it's not even the religious structure. It's supposed to be the people, the body, the people are supposed to be the church. Mm -hmm. And that's not what all of us are taught, right? That's exactly. not, you know, it, it ends up turning into, oh, you didn't wear a skirt as long as our requirements are, or in this church, women don't wear pants. You know, it just mm -hmm. turns into all these different things that is not necessarily in alignment with what God was telling us to do. So without like going deeper, deeper into my faith, and you know, I'm a partial knows I'm a converted Christian. I did not grow up in the Christian faith. Right. So I, I definitely don't have that experience of church hurt where you you grow up a certain way and it's, you know, uh, berated into your mind that if you break free from this, this will absolutely just be the worst thing in your life, you know, possible. Like it's just not accepted. Um, I can only speak to that growing up as a Jehovah witness, where if you do something out of line, you're completely disemboweled. Um, period. Your family doesn't speak to you anymore, you know, all of that. So I know that there's some overlaps in the nonsense <laughs> that can come up, but I also know that it holds us back, right? Like as peoples, as humans, as people, you know, persons who want to just love and be and be able to give freely to the world. And it's hard to show up fully for yourself, let alone in your business or in your leadership or in your ministry or in your volunteering or your advocacy. It's even hard to come back to the full circle that you've been able to rediscover as a passionate person who is also creative and analytical, like being able to pull all those things together and say, well, where can the best of me come together and align with my purpose? It's hard for you to see that when you're blocked by the expectations of these rituals that are just not in alignment with what makes you feel joy, right? Because mm -hmm. God is love and God is joy. And it's really hard to feel that if you have these rules and regulations and rituals that are blocking you from being able to, to make that. So yeah. I completely understand. And, and it's, it's also too, it, it, cause like what you said, you're, you're a converted Christian, mm -hmm. um, the way that you post that. I mean, the reality is, is that whenever you're seeking something that you feel strongly within yourself, you're going to hit some barriers. You're going to hit some challenging moments, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you're letting go of something else. Yeah. You're letting go of something else. And that's, that's pretty difficult. I mean, me deciding to, um, to kind of take a step back from my tradition of, of church, that was a very difficult uh, thing because I, I, it's like, what do I do? Who am I now? You know, going through those questionings. Um, to to making that decision. And ultimately what I found out is like what you said, um, like you said, as a converted Christian, people can, you know, we can we can find out about God, you know, making the choice to go, right, in the confines mm -hmm. of the church or being around certain people or sometimes leaving those people too. You can just find mm -hmm. a deeper sense of God. And so for me, in my experience, I've had a bit of both, right? Yeah. Both experiences are just as valid. You know, I don't discount or say that the church screwed me up and all this kind of stuff. I'm thankful for it too. Yeah. So there's just, there's a balance with it, but I recognize that all of us are seeking truth and we're seeking to um, just to grow, right? And for things to change in our life. And there are different ways we can go about doing that. And it's going to unfold as we take the, the step that we feel inside to do, you know, going with your heart, going with what you know is right for you and, uh, and following suit. Well, what would you say, Parshel? Because, I mean, you made big, big, big decisions with just separating from all that you knew, right? Like, there was like, yo, this wasn't just a place that you went to visit on Sunday. This was embedded into your yeah. whole life. And it had certain restrictions for you personally and professionally, like, you know, just in how you view the world yeah. just in general. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, if this was... And when I say, when I, I, I present and tell people that, you know, I, I was a devoted Christian, then I'm not talking about just showing up faithfully on Sunday. I mean, exactly. like, multiple times a week, 
Um, and some organizations that I was a part of, like literally being the first one there and the last one to leave because I was setting up equipment or I was doing X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, I also earned a master's in theology. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as far as when you talk about, uh, you know, your, you know, just growing and understanding the world, like I didn't have sex with anybody else until my, I met my husband, you know, so my husband was the only man I'd ever been with. Um, and <laughs> I was like, my friends and I in college, we weren't necessarily at the parties, you know what I mean? We were kind of hanging out around the parties, trying to evangelize, okay? This was like- You, you know, are a different type of being, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I say that I, you know, in terms of following this path, like there were so many benefits um, and so many, you know, opportunities of growth that took place in my life um, in that sort of framework. But after a while, you know, it's just, you start to just ask questions and you start to feel something, you know, kind of bubble up inside of you and 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 you decide to seek it out right to understand and to go with with what I know and so um so yeah having done that it's it's definitely like I said from my perspective it's not like I just wasn't into this bit I was very devout and yeah um uh, you know yeah so that's I'm not not sure where I'm going with that but that's no, what, no 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 I, I know exactly where you're going because you okay. know it's all types of you know, can, you, people's devotion and their time and attention to whatever they say they believe in, whatever that is, not just religion and faith, but, you know, they believe in investing, they believe in phil philanthropy, they believe in whatever, but then you're like, but when's the last time you were philanthropical, <laughs> right? Like, you know, like, <laughs> oh, like I, I believe that everybody should give. Okay, well, when is the last time you give? So some people can wear a name or a label over themselves, but they don't actually walk that thing out. So I know what you're saying when you're like, you know, listen, this was a core part of my schedule, <laughs> my rituals, my beliefs. This was my life. Yeah, you tied it into everything. So let me give you kudos because, you know, I pray that my daughter holds and waits herself until she is married. And not because of religion, but because we ain't got time for no more grandbabies. We love them. <laughs> but, okay, uh, we, we got two from my eldest son. Thank you. Love you, King and Storm. Love you, love you, love you. and. <laughs> We want y'all to be the only two for at least the next 10, 15 years. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the fact that you were weaving it in just means so much and you get to be a testimony for so many of the young people and their parents that you work with. So that, you know, helps because just you understand what it means to not be able to see outside of the box until you yeah. can break it. And yeah. And that applies to the creative uh, aspect of where you're trying to get them to break through so they can see their possibilities, um, as well as just the, you know, the technical pieces of what you teach. Because I know you teach a lot of the technical pieces as well for how they can actually use video to produce things and, and to grow their life and their future business endeavors, which I think is amazing. Um, so that leads me to a question. Because you have a lot that you're doing, and it's amazing, and you're doing it from sunny California, which is super amazing. So jealous, because I'm stuck in cold Philadelphia right now. And I know you've traveled, traveled the world, and definitely your business has literally been in all different parts. Way before COVID, you were definitely, you know, multi-state, multi, you know, you were definitely national in terms of your business. So you have a lot that you have always been kind of maneuvering around. I'm careful not to say juggling, but just maneuvering. So how do you give yourself permission to pause? Like, what do you do for partial when you just need to recharge? Um, for one, I definitely meditate. Mm -hmm. That's something that's uh, really important to me that I do. Um, and then I also take the time to, to essentially practice choosing the right thoughts. And that's like a daily practice that I do to kind of give myself that permission because in, in the choosing of my thoughts, I'm choosing what feels good. If yeah. that makes sense. So it's just being active and in that place. Um, and I'm in California now and uh, cannabis is a beautiful plant that, you know, it's kind of been introduced to me as a way to, it's, it's like, instead of, I guess, traditionally people like to, you know, wind down with a glass of wine and, you know, chill, mm -hmm. you know, definitely cannabis is, is a part of that uh, part of my life in that sense, just as um, something just to help to ease uh, certain anxieties. and. Mm -hmm. Um, it just allows you to be a little bit more open, if you will, to just, again, press pause. <laughs> yeah. um, that's one of the ways that I do that. And I always love watching, you know, Hulu, something that's interesting or Netflix, uh, just to kind of gain insight on 
I don't know what's happening in the world and just to um, have that time just to, to think and to laugh. Um, I love laughing. So I watch comedies and things of the nature either make me laugh or think. Yes. Permission to live, love and laugh your way to joy. I know that's right. That was a plug. That was a plug. Um, <laughs> subtitle for the book selfish i'm sorry um <laughs> no i absolutely love that you've been doing all of that you know i can't handle my weight because we know from our time together um with our mutual friend in seattle that mm-hmm. obviously that lovely plant does not sit well with me so because <laughs> i miss all the fun apparently <laughs> i miss boat trips and everything else but we won't talk about that here um, <laughs> next time next, next time, time. So how can people connect with you to learn more, whether they have a teenager or their, because I know you also work with some entrepreneurs that are trying to create better video too. So how can they just connect with you to just find out more about how you can help them just be better in the world? Yeah, the easiest way is just to schedule a time for us to chat. I would love to chat with as many people as I can to help um, to help them where they need to be as it relates to video or maybe to provide an, another activity for their team to get involved in. So the best way to do that is connect with Parshell.com. You can visit there. And if you're interested in registering a teen or what have you, that's uh, also to, to go to, I think that's in the show notes that Kitty said, is mm-hmm. uh, my video playtime. So those are the two places that you can connect with me. That is perfect. Parshall, I honor you. I thank you, my friend, my sister. I'm so grateful that you carved out time, even if you even though you're on California time, so whatever. Um, <laughs> to just show up and share. Like I really do appreciate your honesty and your transparency. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Nikita. So awesome. Yeah. Woo! Listen, Balance Bowley listeners, did I not tell you we were kicking off season 20 in the right way, the best way? I literally could not think of anyone else. And I'm very strategic with like where I place people, where, who, what, how, all that good stuff. And everything that she talked about was about bold decisions and big rewards, starting with you first and being able to ripple that effect right on through the rest of your life. So thank you as well for just tuning in, carving out this time, hopefully distracted free, distraction free rather, uh, to be with us. If you are new to Balance Boldly and you have not yet subscribed, go do that. Subscribe, rate, and share this podcast so we can make sure the other ambitiously bold and brave have access to the valuable life, love, and business balance tools. You can connect with me at Ask Nikita on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, wherever your hearts desire, although Instagram is the place that most people are starting to show up and really pay attention. So feel free to come over there. And of course, if you haven't picked up the book Selfish, it's everywhere. Just go look up Selfish Nikita Thigpen and it will change your life. I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. I'm saying it because that's what other people are saying. So go pick that up, Amazon and all those places. In the interim, go create your balance and create your joy, but remember, do it boldly. <laughs>